my god and i thought i'm gonna have a heart attack and next minute they said okay let him have it and all of them were just kicking me in the shins i would give him something he's gonna throw a brick through my dad's window who does this crap in my head i'm thinking oh man he's gonna mug me <laughs> what kind of school have i gone to this is sick so when I was about eight years old, every single day, I'd go from my mom and dad's shop and I would walk about 20 minutes to a junior school called Rookie Road Junior School in Birmingham, England. And every day, just that 20 minutes, I would be looking at people with such skepticism because I had so much fear inside me about the outside world, about people. I didn't trust people because I got bullied so many times. There was this one time I'm going to school and all of a sudden, these guys, when I say these guys, I mean, I, I'm like eight years old. So these guys are all maybe nine or 10 years old. And as I'm walking to school, they just surround me. There must have been at least somewhere between six to 10 of them. And they all surrounded me 360 degrees. And there were two people that were much bigger. Maybe they were 16 or 17 years old. And next minute, they said, okay, let him have it. And all of them were just kicking me in the shins, kicking me in the legs. I'm walking back home now from school. And I'm thinking to myself, I hate this. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just whacking. And I, they're just kicking me whenever they could. And I'm thinking to myself, I didn't even do anything. I'm probably the smallest guy in the class. Why are these people doing this? And then eventually I made it home, but I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody nothing. I just went in the house, switched on the TV, went upstairs in my room, and I just lived with it, right? So that was one. Then another one, I went to school, and on the way back, I'm looking and I could see, I says, there's some trouble ahead. I see these two or three people about maybe 100 yards in front of me. So something's about to happen and I'm starting to sweat and eventually I get to them they don't move they just stay there and then they just grabbed my hand they grabbed my wrist and they said open your hand and I was so afraid I opened it and then they put something in it and when I looked it was this massive daddy long spider <laughs> that they put into my hand and I thought I'm gonna have a heart attack <laughs> I'm thinking, why the hell did you do this, right? I'm thinking like, who does this crap, right? So they stuck it in my hand and I'm like, I was having some weird trauma, but I went in the house. I didn't tell nobody. I just went inside, switched on the TV, went into my room. And on another day I walked out and I said to my dad, I says, I feel like getting some fish and chips. He goes, okay, go and get, he gives me some money. I come out. It was like, it was about seven o'clock in the evening. The shops had closed. I walked out and as I'm walking, it was only like five minutes. This guy comes over to me, much, much bigger than me. And he's standing next to me and he goes, hey, how's it going? I says, good. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh man, he's going to mug me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and he goes, you got any money? I said, no, I don't have any money, man. He goes, come on, give me some money. And I'm thinking to myself, I hate this. And eventually he just kept walking with me. He didn't like hit me or anything like that. He just wouldn't leave. And I'm walking, I'm walking. And eventually I get to the fish and chip shop and I'm thinking now, what am I going to do? He, he's going to know I got money because I'm going in the chip shop. So I went in the chip shop and I'm looking out the window and he's sitting there. So I ordered whatever I was ordering. I grabbed my food and... And there he is as soon as I come out and I'm heading back home and he goes you got any money and I'm like he knows I got the money because I just bought this stuff he wouldn't leave me alone he walked all the way until I got to to my mom and dad's shop and I thought to myself I know what this guy's gonna do if I don't give him something he's gonna throw a brick through my dad's window in the shop and I thought this is stupid man and then I took the, some money that I had in my hand and I just gave it to him and he just took off so I went back in inside I didn't tell anybody I just put the TV on ate my fish and chips and went upstairs into my room another day I come out of my shop I'm heading up this road and I, I love these cream cakes that you get at this place in England called Firkins Bakery so I'm heading there to get these um, these cream cakes got them and on their bag it said Firkins cake so everybody knows this is the guy this is their bakery this is their cakes that they got in that bag so I'm walking down this street and as I'm walking I got my cakes and I'm like yes can't wait to get home man. I love these these are my favorite the one was a, a jam donut and the other one was an apple turnover with a ton of cream in it and I was like yes and I looked up and I'm thinking okay trouble ahead I can see it <laughs> I see these two guys they're coming my way and I'm thinking I know something's gonna happen here so as I'm walking both of these guys stood right in front of me and they're bigger than me and they go hand them over I said what the cream cakes I don't thought this is stupid. <laughs> 
<laughs> they go, hand him over, because they knew it said Firkins on the back. They go, hand him over. And I'm thinking, no, my instant reaction was, I ain't giving you that. I'm not giving him to you. So I said, no. And so I took one step to the right, and the guy in front of me, he took a step to the right. And I'm like, he's not going to let me pass. I moved to the left. The other guy stood in the way. And then I thought, how am I going to get out of this? And this one guy, this sounds so stupid. But what he did was he lifted up his sweater and he had a belt on. And on his belt, he had a keychain. And on the keychain, he had a knife. And so what he did was he opened the knife on the keychain. It was like, it was folded like a pen. He opened it like that. And then he pointed it at me. But the thing is, it was still on his hip. It was still on his keychain. So he was like, he was like doing this. He's like, I'm going to stab you. And I'm looking at him. I'm going, you look like an idiot, man. How are you going to stab me? with you this thing's on your on your hip and he goes come on give me the cakes give me the bags i didn't know am i supposed to cry am i supposed to like be in fear because right now i just feel like laughing my head off because this guy looks like an idiot he's gonna stab me with his hip and right at that moment I was gonna hand him the bags and then I looked over the guy's shoulder and I saw this other guy coming up the street and he was bigger than all of us as well especially these two guys and as I looked over his shoulder this guy on the right he looked like this and he saw that guy and right there he re he thought that guy's gonna help me so he sort of backed off and moved to one side and I knew that guy ain't gonna help me <laughs> ain't gonna do nothing and that guy as soon as they moved to one side i just bombed it man i just grabbed had my cream cakes in my hands and i just took off like a rocket down the street and when i got home would you believe it i never told nobody i just switched on the tv sat in front and ate my cream cakes i didn't tell nobody and then on this one day my dad tells me to go get some groceries from across the street in front so i get out i go to the groceries and the guy in the grocery shop gives me a bag and i'm holding the bag like this with two hands and there's stuff hanging on the top of the bag and uh, I'm about to cross the road and as, as I'm about to cross the road I look to my left and there's another guy <laughs> he's standing there and he's looking at me and I'm like okay trouble ahead I've been there before and he's walking over to me and he was literally gonna grab the stuff that I had in my bag so I bombed it I started running and I ran across the street and I didn't have any hands to push the door open but I had the bags in my hand like this and I just ran right into my dad's door it was all glass and as I pushed it it opened I fell on the ground all the groceries went everywhere and my dad was standing there behind the counter and he looked at me and then he saw the guy <laughs> that was chasing me right behind me I'm on the floor the beans are everywhere right and I'm looking up my dad eyes that guy and I could see his eyes met that guy's eyes and I could see on my dad's face the anger and all of a sudden my dad just grabbed this stick like it wasn't really a stick it was made out of cardboard they had material that they would roll on it and it was all the empty ones the material had been sold and he used to store these cardboard pipes he just grabbed one of those and he just jumped over me while I was on the floor he headed out the out the door and he chased the guy and I as I got up I'm looking out, out outside and I'm looking at my dad and I could see him running like this right, with this massive cardboard pole chasing this guy and I'm looking and I'm still looking for five minutes and I can still see him and would you believe it my dad ran all the way to the second fish and chip shop right after this guy I don't know if he ever got him he probably didn't but on that day I'm thinking man I got a bodyguard I should have told my dad all this all these times I never told him about what was happening to me and finally he's witnessed it and when he came back you know I can't even remember having a conversation with him I just sat there in front of the TV and I got on with my life and that was it this stuff was just like it felt like it was just normal it felt like am I supposed to handle all this shit that's going on in my life by myself or am I supposed to tell anybody I never told anybody and then I took this exam called 11 plus and everybody thought I was gonna pass it and I failed it I was like the first guy in my family to fail the 11 plus I felt like such a loser because then everybody started saying to me you ain't gonna get into any good schools now because you didn't pass your 11 plus you're gonna have to go to that other school that crappy one because you didn't pass your exams and I was like terrified because I heard bad press about this
this school. And eventually, I'm now 11 years old, and it's the first day I go to this school. And when I get there, every single person, there was like 500 kids. Every single person was taller than me. I was like the shortest kid in the entire school. And on my very first day, I looked around and here's what I saw. I saw these people, these kids playing this game. There's a ball. They'd kick the ball. The ball would go way up in the air. And I'm, imagine, I'm just a little kid, innocent little kid going to my secondary school wondering, what do they do here? These are all the big kids. And I'm sitting there and I watch this kid kick the ball. It goes all the way up in the air. And I'm looking like this as it comes. As it comes down, wherever that ball landed, if it landed next to another innocent kid that was just standing there, everybody would kung fu kick that kid in the head. Literally a 10, 15 kick come flying out and knocking that guy on the floor. And I'm sitting there going, oh my God, <laughs> what kind of school have I gone to? This is sick. And I'm thinking to myself, it's gonna happen again. And in that school, every day I witnessed people getting bullied and I thought to myself, I am dead. And I used to remember coming home from that school every day crying my eyes out because I couldn't handle not having the confidence to say or do what I wanted to do. And it was like everywhere I went, my head would be like this. And the problem is when I got home, what do you think I did? Yeah, I put the TV on and I sat there and I watched it and I never told nobody. Nobody knew any of the shit that was going on in my life. I never told my dad, never told my mom, never told told my brothers, sisters, cousins, didn't tell anybody. I just didn't know that I could tell them. I just thought I had to handle this shit by myself, but I had no idea how to, how to handle it. And it was literally killing me because my dad never said to me, so how's it going in school? How are you feeling? Nobody said it. And I didn't know whether or not I should be telling anybody, but I never did. The reason I didn't tell my parents is because at that age, I mean, obviously between eight and eight and 11 years of age, for some reason, my dad never opened the door. He never sat down and actually asked me questions about how my life was. He never asked me, how school? How you feeling? What's happening out there? And because he never asked any questions, I just automatically assumed this is life, that I have to be the one that solves these problems because I didn't know any better. And at the same time, I started thinking, maybe if I go to my dad and I tell him what's happening, maybe he's going to think, you know, don't be a little sissy. I think I had this kind of thought in my head. My dad had certain expectations because he had such confidence himself that how can I admit to him, oh, I get bullied every single day. Or I just felt at that time that I couldn't go to him because he didn't open that door. And what I wished he did is I wish my dad would have actually sat down with me, asked me questions. Because so many times I see people, all they do with their kids is lecture them, tell them stuff, but they never ask them questions. And the only time you can actually tell somebody or show somebody that you actually care about them is by asking them questions so that then this way they know no, oh, you know, he actually wants to know about my life. And so I would tell any parent, if your kid hasn't told you anything, it's probably because you ain't asked him anything. Even if you ask, if he still doesn't tell you anything or she doesn't tell you anything, it's probably because you haven't been vulnerable. Because the way I brought up my kids is I realized that they're not going to tell me stuff until I sh tell them first what I was going through when I was their age. And so as I'm becoming more vulnerable to them, they're, they're thinking, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to tell dad that I've been feeling the same way that you felt when you were younger. And so that's what I wish my dad would have done. Just sat down with me and asked me questions and made me feel as though I could open up. Because if he had done that, my whole life would have changed while I was at school. Because I know for a fact my dad went through stuff when he was going to school, but he never told me until I was like 16, 17 years of age. By then, that information, it didn't hit hit home with me. He told me that he went to school when he was about 10, 11 years of age, and literally the teacher kicked the crap out of him for whatever reason. And after that, he never went to school. He lied to his parents. He'd just go to the farm and he'd sit there every day, but never went to school because he hated it. If he had told me that when I was 10, telling me his experience, I could have opened up about how I was feeling going to school every day. It wasn't the teacher beating the crap out of me. It was the kids. And so I wish he had just told me that earlier. That would have made a big difference.